there is a digital product that's on D and D Beyond that people can grab. What what is that product? What is this 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 kind of addition to uh, Glory of Giants? So it's a little adventure called Giants of the Star Forge that Patrick Rennie wrote, and his um, his mission was basically okay. Here's the book, use it to right. make an adventure. Walk DMs through the process of, of using the book to make an adventure. This was a really fun project to work on, uh, especially for me because I love to create uh, adventures with random tables and random generators. And that was kind of the brief for this adventure. It was, you know, show what we can do with Bigby Presents Glory of the Giants using all the fun new tables and inspiring rules and inspiring random generators that are in that book. So I literally went through that book and kind of followed step by step, you know, how to generate a giant themed adventure. Rolled up for the uh, type of giant, fire giant, and then I went through and rolled what kinds of uh, fire giant encounters and fire giant adjacent encounters. You know, what kinds of treasure do these fire giants have? What's the adventure hook? Uh, all of this came straight from Glory of the Giants. And so it's really meant to show DMs how fun and how easy it is to use Glory of the Giants to come up with giant adventures. And then you fleshed out the whole thing. How about That's how right. long did it take you to like to write the rest of it once you did all the random encounters oh, yeah. and everything else? Well, r r yeah, rolling the random encounters, that was the easy part. That was the quick part, right? And then it takes, uh, it took me about a week to to write the rest of it. Yeah, so to kind of fill in the middle spots, but that's just because, you know, I'm a perfectionist like that. <laughs> <laughs> Were I in those random rolls, you're like, oh no, what am I going to do? <laughs> a little bit, but that's kind of my favorite part of yeah. doing random rolls is, uh, as a player, I really enjoy being surprised at the table, right? When you realize things are clicking into place, the story is going a direction and you're like, oh, that's why this is happening, that, you know, this is why that's happening. As a DM, you get to do that before the game sometimes, and using random tables is a great way to do that because you're kind of forced to be creative. You're kind of like, well, how do I make this, you know, fire elemental kind of fit into this location? And I'm like, hmm, well, let's say that it's, you know, working with this kind of creature and, and or, you know, it's working with air elementals and, and we throw in some kind of, you know, cinder whirlwind mixer. You know, it forces you to think creatively because you're constrained to what you roll. I could just re-roll, but I like to, I don't know. I like to be kind of forced to think creatively. Is there a thing in particular in this book, in, in, in Glory of Giants, that you enjoy the most? Or like, what, what are some of the biggest highlights for you? Because you, you had to plunder this book to make an adventure out of it. Totally, yeah. I really love the uh, maps in it. It's got a bunch of maps uh, designed by Dyson Logos, who's an awesome cartographer. And they're all giant-sized maps you can drop into your campaign, whether it's uh, exploration maps, you know, going through a misty veil that's, you know, kind of beleaguered by cloud giants, or, uh, you know, a druidic shrine in the middle of a world tree that, you know, the roots are the size of mountains, uh, or, you know, uh, uh, the Star Forge, you know, the middle of a, a crater created by uh, a falling star and with giant-sized blacksmith equipment, anvils and furnaces, you know, these things that become terrain to a human-sized adventurer when they're for giants. So I really love the maps and find them so inspiring. And, and you know, I just flip through the pages and look at the maps and I'm like, how would I use this in my campaign? And Specifically to the adventure that you have in here, can you tell me a little bit about the story and also may, maybe some of your Dungeon Master tips as well? Sure. Yeah, the adventure kicks off with a a uh, bunch of city leaders hiring you, hiring your adventuring party to go rescue their missing blacksmith. They're, they have a legendary blacksmith who's vital to the city's economy, and uh, he was kidnapped by giants. So you have to go and track down these giants, figure out why they kidnapped him, and uh, hopefully rescue him from you know having to make giant-sized uh, uh, weapons and armor for a tyrannical fire giant forge collar. For tips, I would recommend that DMs don't be afraid to go in cold. I think it's so much better oftentimes, from, at least in my experience, if I just kind of have a general idea, a one sentence prompt, and then go in and let my players figure it out. Let them decide the challenges. And what I mean by that is, I'll, I'll illustrate by way of an example. I recently was running a D&D &D game and 
I described the room as having a painting in the corner, which was, you know, a finely illustrated painting of something totally, totally arbitrary, totally made up on the fly. Uh, but for whatever reason, my players glommed onto that and they said, this painting is super important. Otherwise, he wouldn't have mentioned it. And I said to myself, I just mentioned it. I didn't mean, okay, well, let's go with this. And they say, there must be some puzzle because this is a dead end. There's a crystal ball in this room too. Maybe we hold the crystal ball up to the painting. You know, it does all these things. And I, my tip is to let that happen and say yes. And so after a couple minutes of them futzing with the painting, looking behind it, tilting it in certain ways, you know, painting on it, doing things, they hold this crystal ball up to it and they say, what's this do? And I say, you figured it out. You figured out my painting puzzle. That <laughs> decodes the, you know, the secret rhyme that was, you know, embedded in the painting. Uh, congratulations, now you can go on with the adventure. And uh, it's so funny, you know, I tell, uh, I tell my wife afterward, I'm like, oh, you'll never guess how I, I conned my players into thinking they were geniuses today, which <laughs> is a benevolent con, I think. Yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> but, uh, you know, and, and of course, I would never tell them. Hopefully, hopefully they're not watching this interview. But, uh, you know, that's, I think, the most fun to me is because they surprise me with their creative solutions. And I say, why not? Yeah, let's make it a thing because you're having a great time. I'm having a great time. Let's just go with it. And I think having that yes and attitude is a really good thing to do as a DM.